In this video, I am going to be explaining the rules to the game Patchwork. Patchwork designed by Uwe Rosenberg, famous for his work on Agricola, Caverna, Bonanza, and a number of other popular contemporary board games. Uh, Patchwork is a game about quilts, as you may already have noticed. Uh, in Patchwork, each player has a board representing the quilt that they are going to be trying to fill in with all of these little scraps of fabric that we can see in the table in front of us in a big circle around this central board. Uh, during the course of the game, players will be taking these pieces of fabric and then placing them somewhere on their board, making as many spots filled in as possible. The goal in patchwork is to make the best quilt, which means having the fewest spaces left open on your board. Uh, during the course of the game, points will come from the amount of buttons which player has, each button representing one point, as well as each empty space left over on the player board at the end of the game will lose a player two points. Those are the main point-based determiners in the game, so let's uh, get started into talking about how it works. Each turn, a player is going to choose one of the next three pieces of quilt from this pawn, which you'll see situated somewhere in the circle that goes around the board. Each of these pieces are possible candidates for the next one to add to your quilt, but they will have different costs and related effects. So if we take a look at these three pieces, which are the ones eligible for the current player's turn based on the pawn's position, you'll notice that these pieces have two pieces of information on them. Uh, the first is this number here. That is the cost in buttons. In this game, buttons are the currency, so the more you have, the more flexibility will be open to you. And as I stated earlier, buttons are points at the end of the game. The other factor is this second number here with the hourglass. That is the amount of time it will take to add it to your quilt. In this game, just like in life, time is a bit of a resource. Let's take a look at how that works. On the center of the table here, you'll notice that we have a board. This board, which is uh, a spiral towards the center, uh, is going to keep track of how much time players have used. Each player has a piece on this board representing their color, which is going to be moving forward along the spaces as gameplay continues. Once a player has gone all the way around this board and reached the very center, that's the end of the game for them. So you'll only have so much time that you'll be able to spend over the course of the game. On your turn, after selecting your piece and adding it somewhere to your growing puzzle, you're going to pay the buttons to the bank and move your piece forward X amount of spaces where X is the time cost which was shown on the piece that you just added. This board in the center of the table also has an important second function. It will determine whose turn it currently is. I'll explain that a little bit further. Um, each player having a piece representing themselves, it is always the turn of the player who is farthest behind on this central track. In this particular example, the green player is farthest behind, so we know that it is currently their turn. If the green player were to pick up a piece which cost one time, they would move forward one space, and then they would have another turn. Let's say they chose something which moved them forward three spaces, one, two, three. Now it becomes the yellow player's turn. As one last point about this, if the yellow player decided to purchase something which cost two time, they would move directly on top of the green player, and it would be the yellow player's turn again. Turn only passes when you have passed the other player's piece in the center of the board. So let's move them back now. Um, a couple of other things you'll notice from this board. 
Spotted throughout this central board are pictures of buttons. This represents the main source of income in this game, which is different pieces of quilt will have a different amount of buttons showing on those pieces. If you take a look at this one here, you'll notice that there are two physical buttons on it. Don't confuse this with the cost, it's the actual number of buttons. When a player passes one of these buttons shown on the board, they will receive an amount of buttons equal to the quantity of buttons showing on all of the pieces currently on their board. So every button on their whole quilt is counted and they will receive that many. This is the main way that a player gets income, but they may also get income if on their turn they choose to pass. Sometimes you might not be able to afford whatever the next piece options are for you. And if that's the case, or you just don't want to buy any of them, you can choose to spend your turn passing. In order to pass, take your piece and move it forward until it is in the space directly in front of your opponent. And then take from the bank an amount of buttons equal to the amount of spaces which you skipped in order to get there. In this case, the yellow player, I believe, moved three spots, so would take three buttons from the bank. Those are the two ways you can gain buttons in this game, and that's how the time counter works. If I can point out one last thing on this central board, you'll notice that occasionally mottled throughout are little pieces of leather strips. If a player is the first to cross over from one spot to the next, in between which is a leather strip, they may pick up that piece of leather and immediately add it to a free space on their quilting board. This is a good way to fill in gaps which have been left from the Tetris-like nature of the pieces, so any time that you have an opportunity to get that, it's pretty handy to do. There is one other reason that a player might want to fill in their player board, which is if you manage to fill in a 7x7 seven seven area on your player board and you're the first person to do so, you will gain this bonus piece 7x7 uh, seven seven sort of bonus token. This is worth, surprise, surprise, 7 bonus points at the end of the game. So useful to get that. That is the only other source of points. Again, at the end of the game, you are going to count up your remaining buttons. You will subtract two points for every empty space on your quilt, and then the game is over. Uh, just to clarify one earlier point, in case it wasn't perfectly clear, any time it's your turn and you select one of the three next pieces, you're going to move the pawn into the space from the piece you selected, and in this way the pawn is going to travel around this circle around the board here. Um, yeah, I think uh, that concludes the explanation for patchwork. Let me know if you have any questions.